Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I posted something on the channel the other day in regards to all of the laptops that I've got coming into the channel. And over the next two or three weeks, we're going to have a lot of laptops to review. So I wanted to give you fair warning that that's coming. Uh, but I also thought it might be fun to kind of kick off this series of laptop reviews by looking at the laptops that I actually use. And I've got the stack of four that I use most frequently here on the desk. And we're going to step through each of these. Now, I reviewed every one of these laptops already, so in many ways, this is going to be uh, kind of like a long-range update as to how these machines are working for me after the initial review. And they are working quite well because I am still using them, of course, and we'll step through what I like about each of them and also maybe some of the gotchas that I have experienced with them as well. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for these laptops with my own funds, with the exception of the one on the bottom here, uh, this one that my father bought for me uh, about 23 years ago. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this stack of laptops here is all about and how they're working for me. All right, the first laptop we're going to take a look at here is my Surface Laptop Go. And one of the recurring themes that you'll see throughout this video is that the laptops I really like are the ones that are powerful but compact. And this one really surprised me. I bought this a few months ago. The price point on this is about $700 as configured. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It is kind of basic transportation, but it has a regular i5 processor on board, an i5-1035G1, and that gives you actually decent performance for something that isn't all that expensive, and the build quality feels really premium on it. There's no backlit keyboard or anything, but you do get a touch display here if you're into touch screens. And the processor is powerful enough to do the things that I do here on the channel with it. So this usually sits here on the desk when I'm demoing Windows software and I'm having it fire its output into my production system. And it's powerful enough to do all of that kind of stuff. It's got a full purpose USB-C port here on the left hand side. So this does power in and video out along with data devices. But it also has a full size USB port here for when you need that. Uh, you're not getting into this thing to take it apart, but it is, again, compact and light, and I value that quite a bit. And that's why the Surface Laptop Go here is my go-to Windows laptop for general purpose computing. 12-inch display on it. It's not very high resolution. I think it's running at 1536 by 1024, but the display is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. So when you're browsing the web and stuff and doing document work on it, you do have a good amount of vertical screen real estate, which you wouldn't have in a 16 by 9 device. Uh, so all in, if you're looking for something inexpensive but really well put together, uh, this one is certainly worth looking at. A couple of gotchas with it. The battery life isn't spectacular on it. It will go for a good number of, of a good amount of time, a couple of hours, like seven, eight hours, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but it's not as good as some other laptops might be. Uh, the other thing is that it does have a fan on board because the chip that it's running with needs to be actively cooled. And the other day I was just having it sitting idle on the kitchen counter and it must have been doing a Windows update and the fan was going nuts. Uh, so it does make a little bit of noise, but not bad uh, really for what it is. And it's a nice addition to my fleet. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, this next one is a computer that's no longer available. It's now been replaced by a new model, but I'm going to talk about it anyhow because uh, what's applicable to this one is applicable to the new version. This is the Lenovo Y740. I bought this about a year and a half, almost two years ago. And this is a gaming laptop. It's got an i7-9750H processor on board. That's a six-core chip. I got mine configured with an RTX 2080 Max-Q GPU. Now, what's important to note is that the uh, 2080 Max-Q is not as powerful as a desktop 2080, uh, but it runs as fast as my prior desktop gaming computer's configuration ran. And what I really like about the Lenovo gaming laptops is just how compact they are. And again, because we don't have a lot of room here on the desk, this really uh, works well, not only for sitting here on the desk, but also for traveling with. And I'm finding, actually, that 
the reason I bought the computer is not the use that I'm getting out of it. So I bought it with the intention of just having something for demoing VR and stuff here on the channel. Uh, I do that from time to time. But what this really has proven itself to be is a very effective production computer when I am trying to do something remotely. A few months ago, actually last year now, uh, we did a live stream of my local high school's graduation. I volunteered for the day to help them out. They were doing a drive through thing. It went for eight hours and this thing was live streaming and managing uh, three or four active cameras, basically acting as a production switcher. I used software called vMix and I did a whole video on vMix and we were running it actually on this laptop when we did it. And the combination of the processor and the GPU in here make this really effective for gaming, but also very effective for live video production. So I can pretty much take this anywhere and have a TV studio in a backpack. And that's what I've really come to love about this. It has a Thunderbolt port on the left-hand side for recording. I plug in my super fast solid state drives into it. Uh, it's just an awesome machine. The fans do make a lot of noise. Uh, that's par for the course with gaming laptops, but it's not as loud as the uh, one that I had before, which was an Alienware machine that was much larger as well. Uh, they managed to get this just under five pounds. It is four pounds, 15 ounces, or 2.24 kilograms. So it's actually pretty easy to travel with. And all in, I've been just, ter just incredibly happy with this thing. Not terribly happy, but incredibly happy with this. Uh, the display that I got on it is a 1080p display and it's running at 144 hertz at 500 nits of brightness. The battery life is not great on this, as you can imagine, but you know, usually I'm plugging it in somewhere to get whatever it is I am doing done. Uh, the new one is called the Legion 7. It's about the same form factor, so it's about the same size and weight, uh, but the Legion 7 has a much better keyboard and obviously updated components. And I think I've got one that just came in uh, with an AMD configuration that I'll be reviewing very shortly. So if you're looking for a good gaming laptop, these Lenovo Legions are really spectacular. Now they have a Legion 5, uh, which is a plastic body and some different configurations. And then the Legion 7, which is the, uh, the successor to this one, has a metal body. So if you wanted something that has a more premium build quality to it, the 7s have that. The 7s have the Thunderbolt port. Uh, but the fives perform really well just with a plastic casing and no Thunderbolt. But, you know, take a look at them and see uh, what might work for your configuration. But I've been very, very happy with this machine, both for gaming, but more so for video production. Now, this next laptop is probably no surprise to any of you who've been following me for the last couple of months. It is the MacBook Air with the M1 processor. And there has been nothing that surprised me more than this machine because when I bought it, I was intending to get it as kind of a supplemental travel computer to replace my 12-inch MacBook. But this turned out to be extremely powerful, so powerful that I use this pretty much for about 80% of what I do throughout the day. Um, the M1 processor on this is incredibly efficient. I am editing video. This is one of my 4K productions that I sent up for when we visited my brother up in Vermont. It just does everything effortlessly, and it does it better than my MacBook Pro that has an Intel processor that I bought a couple of years ago. And what surprised me the most about this thing is that it is fanless. It doesn't get hot. It's crazy. Like, I'll have my MacBook sitting on the desk loading this video edit up, and you'll be hearing the fan going, the MacBook Pro. This one, totally silent, not hot, and it performs about the same. Uh, this will sometimes throttle a little bit on video exports and stuff, but even then, it is still outputting video at about the same rate of speed as a MacBook Pro from a couple of years ago. Now, I have a little secondary office upstairs, and I dock this with a Thunderbolt dock up there. And when I'm doing video conferences and Zoom calls and stuff, uh, the MacBook Pro had its little fan just going nuts when it was doing that and projecting onto a large display. This one, again, completely silent and faster. And I don't know what kind of magic they've done with this M1 processor, but it has been just a huge surprise as to how good this is. And again, I'm using this pretty much as my day-to-day uh, -day computer and editing a good amount of the videos that you see here on the channel. I would like a larger version of this. I'm hoping a MacBook Pro is on the way. I'm hearing rumors that there will be one with an even more powerful processor, but this is just a groundbreaking processor from Apple. 
And again, it surprised me, and it's something that uh, has really become a nice part of my workflow. The battery life on this is spectacular as well, and it's great to have something that's relatively lightweight that I can travel with once I start traveling again that has all the power of my heavier laptop. What I used to do is take that little 12-inch MacBook with me into New York City, but I couldn't do much video editing with it, but I didn't want to lug around the big MacBook Pro. Uh, this is really a nice compromise. It's not all that heavy. It's about 2.8 pounds or 1.29 kilograms. has a decent display. It's 2560 by 1600, uh, and it runs at about 400 nits, so it is a high DPI display, about 227 pixels per inch, and it just looks and runs great. It doesn't run Windows, of course. You can get parallels going with the ARM version of Windows. It's okay. Um, so I have been using that shadow game streaming software for the limited number of Windows apps that I might need to run on this one. And then, of course, I've got uh, those other two Windows laptops that we looked at. But this M1 technology is the real deal, and it's something that really surprised me. I was expecting something like what we've seen with Windows ARM, where it runs okay, but it's not any better than what was before. This is better than what was in a fanless uh, MacBook Air shell a year ago. It's just that amazing. And the full review that I did will really give you some good examples of just how amazing it is. Now, one other thing that Apple did exceptionally well with this machine is that it runs Intel applications without having to do anything different. You just boot them up like you used to do. The compatibility, for me at least, has been 100%. All the apps that I ran before on an Intel Mac run here, and many of them run better, especially games. If you check out my review, uh, you'll see Rocket League running on this MacBook Air uh, light years better than it did on uh, the same computer with an Intel processor from the prior year. It's just crazy. Uh, this configuration, by the way, has 16 gigs of RAM, and it's running with the 8-core GPU. I'm not sure what the difference really is between the seven core variant that they offer and the eight core, but I did want the RAM for video editing. And I think for the MacBook Air at this point, 16 gigs of RAM is the most you can get. So I did spend a little bit more than the base level on this one. I think I was probably in the $1,500 territory. Uh, but again, I've just been exceptionally happy with what Apple put together here. The next one I've got, the last one, is a lot of fun. So let's get that one on the desk. So this is my retro workstation. And what I love about this computer is that I have had this since I was a senior in college back in 1998. Uh, my dad bought this for me as a graduation gift. And it is just an awesome computer. So this is a Micron Transport XKE. I've got Windows 98 installed on it. Uh, recently, we actually put on a a uh, compact flash to IDE adapter. So this is actually running uh, with a solid state drive now. And it actually performs pretty well. It's running better than I remembered it running when it had a spinning hard drive on board. So it's definitely not you know, high performance by today's standards. But back in its day, this was really one of the first true desktop replacements. Now, I got this because I often do some retro stuff here on the channel. We like to look at old games and old PC stuff. So this is what we'll use for that. It's small enough to fit on the desk, a lot smaller than a desktop computer. But again, it performs pretty much where a desktop of its era would perform. Uh, this has a Pentium 233 MMX processor, 96 megabytes, not gigabytes, megabytes of RAM. And I've got a four gigabyte uh, compact flash drive in it right now as a hard drive. Uh, this is a 1024 by 768 display. It only runs, though, in 16-bit color when you have it at its native resolution. That's about 65,000 colors. So you have to turn it down to get uh, the full 16.8 million. Not unusual for its day. It's big and hefty, though, 9 pounds or 4.08 kilograms. But that wasn't really obnoxiously heavy uh, back in its era. So it is uh, something that was pretty portable. I took this to China with me. Uh, and it worked really well on a very long flight. Now, I'm going to shut it down because one of the things that you don't see anymore is modularity in laptops. And what you have here on the front is a floppy drive that I can just pull out and I can put a battery in there. And then the CD-ROM drive here would also come out. So if you had a long flight like I did, um, you could put two batteries in this and get some crazy battery life out of it. Um, and that was pretty cool. You could also take this out, the CD-ROM drive out, and put a second hard drive in here. I actually had an adapter for that. Um, so it was really flexible. 
Uh, the batteries, of course, were replaceable, <laughs> which is not something you see these days, or at least not easily replaceable these days. And it's got a ton of ports on it, a modem. It had a mobile connector for, I think, Motorola phones of the era, so you could plug in your cell phone to it and use it remotely. I was doing that. Had a game port, one of the first USB ports on a production computer, composite and S-Video out for projectors. You had your PS2 keyboard and mouse back here, serial, a docking station port. They sold a pretty hefty docking station that I did not have with this. Uh, and then it has IR, parallel, serial, uh, two PCMCIA PC slots. I have a, a Type 3 card here that serves as a modem and an Ethernet adapter, Kensington lock. I mean, this thing just had it all. And it's a computer that is made, was made so well that it still works to this day. It was really um, a workhorse and remains that way. My only concern with it is that the uh, backlight on the panel here is getting very dim. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do anything with that or fix it. Um, but I can use the VGA output to get uh, this captured footage or output into a monitor or something like that. But it's a really fun laptop, and I'm just so happy that this little piece of my uh, computing past is still functional and has some useful purpose still. And again, it's a pretty nicely performing computer. So that is my fleet of laptops, the current ones that I'm using for most of my day-to-day -day kind of stuff. And all of the specifics that you might want to know about these are covered in their individual reviews, so definitely check those out. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.